Okay, so today I'm here to tell you a story time. I've never done this before, so just bear with me. Basically what happened was I asked Instagram and Snapchat to give me questions for me to do like a get ready with me where I answer questions. And someone ended up telling me to do a birth story. I really feel like I cannot talk today. And when they said that, I was like, what would I even say? Then I was like, I feel like actually I do have a good birth story and it's long. So I didn't want to do it in that video. And I also didn't want to do it while I was just getting ready because I felt like I wouldn't be able to focus on actually telling all parts of the story. I also found out that a lot of you are very curious about, I guess, what, it was like for me to give birth or what it's been like for me to have a new baby and I didn't know that many people would be interested in that but apparently they are so I will talk about that more in probably my next video I will do like the part where I actually answer your questions and if anyone here that's watching this video has any questions for me just comment them below and I will read through them okay I feel like this story starts like a week before my due date okay so what happened was like a week before my due date, me and Isaiah got into a fight and it wasn't like, I don't even know, it wasn't like a crazy fight, but basically there were some problems happening and he decided he was gonna go stay with his grandpa. Like the worst timing in the world for your boyfriend to go stay somewhere else. When you're about to have a baby and at any point you're just like, hmm, am I gonna give birth? <laughs> like, do I need someone to drive me to the hospital? And I live in a town where I don't have any of my friends or family. So like he was the only one who was going to be able to drive me to the hospital that was in a town that was like 35 minutes away. So I feel like that sounds shitty, but I agreed at the time for him to leave because we weren't getting along. So I was like, yeah, just go stay there. But after a few days, I was like getting very, very annoyed and pissed off because it was like, you should definitely be here for my safety. <laughs> like what if I need you here? And I was taking care of two dogs, one of them was a devil child dog that I could not catch myself whenever I was like full blown pregnant, I couldn't catch him. He would just be a terror and run. So I was a little stressed out. And then the day came of my due date and I had a doctor's appointment in the other town and I had Alicia take me to the doctor's appointment. Everything was fine, but I was just like, when the hell am I gonna go into labor? So we came back here and we ended up going to Walmart and just walking around as much as possible to try to get me to go into labor. And that night, okay, Alicia ended up staying the night with me that night. I don't know if she has some kind of subliminal thing in her to be like, oh, Sydney's so probably gonna go into labor tonight. <laughs> because that's what happened. Ironically, the next morning at like seven in the morning, Isaiah had court. So I knew that if he was in court, he couldn't leave court to take me to the hospital because that's like the only place where I wouldn't be able to get a hold of him or text him or anything. So I think that's why Alicia ended up staying with me. But that night when she was staying with me, me and Isaiah got into like an even bigger fight. He came over, he sought a key to get in the apartment and he just came in, <laughs> took my ring, my beautiful ring that I love so much. And he also left the keys to my car because he was taking my car. I think he was gonna take it to court the next morning. So I think that's why Alicia was gonna stay. He left the key to my car and <laughs> he took off walking, which his grandpa's was literally a block away. So it's not that big of a deal, but I wanted my ring back. So I followed his ass. <laughs> I followed him to his grandpa's. I had like no shoes on. I was, it was my due date that day. And I just like, yeah, it was. <laughs> It's a little bit of a fight. It was not that fun. It was not the perfect time to be getting into even more of a fight. So after that crazy mess happens, okay, it was like super early in the morning and I came home and Alicia was still here and finally we went to bed. I feel like we went to bed at like six or seven or something ridiculous. I just remember being super uncomfortable, which I was super uncomfortable for like the week prior plus the month prior. I don't know. This baby was like not fitting in my stomach, but it didn't really feel abnormal to me. And then I woke up like an hour after going to sleep and I felt weird. <laughs> I woke up and I instantly just felt like I had to poop and it felt like gas pains. I don't know if anyone's ever had these, but I get them where it'll just like hurt like a sharp pain. And it'll kind of come and go because it's like gas. And that's what I thought it was. So I went to the bathroom and I was like sitting on the toilet and I was like, wait, are these contractions? <laughs> it's like, hmm. It's like, maybe I should pay attention if they're like coming and going in a timely fashion. So I did and they were, so I was like, oh shit. So I went in there and I was like, Alicia, let's go. We need to go to the hospital now. Cause I was like, 
very scared of not getting to the hospital in time to get an epidural because that was like my main concern. That ended up being the perfectly wrong timing because Isaiah was like in court when we went. So I think I texted him and he didn't write me back until like I was already at the hospital. Actually then I think he called me and I was like, yeah, I'm at the hospital, but I was also kind of being like, I don't know if you want to waste your time coming here because I don't want to like go in there and get sent home instantly and then say, yeah, you're in labor, but you're not far enough along or whatever. Like that was my concern too. So I waited for him to even come there until I actually was like 100% sure I was not leaving. But I remember on the way there, my stomach, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think contractions hurt me that bad. I just, I got an ice pack and I remember it just hurt on my pelvic bone and that's where I put the ice pack and that's, I don't know, it wasn't that bad of a pain to me, but I would just like, it would come and I would just breathe and not talk and then it would go away and then I would be fine. So yeah, I got to the hospital. We go up there, here's the thing. I knew I was like in labor pretty far because the day before that I was dilated. I don't remember, hang on. Okay, so the, the day before that when I went to the doctor, I think I was dilated like two or three or something. And sometimes people feel contractions at that point, but I wasn't feeling anything. So I knew I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure I'm far enough along to stay here because I think you only have to be like three or four to stay there. I don't even know, but you have to be having your contraction. So I knew that it was like, it was worth going and it was pretty painful, but like, I'm telling you, it wasn't like the worst thing ever. And whenever I got there, I feel like everyone was like, thinking I wasn't that far along because I wasn't really acting like I was in total pain. I didn't like wheelchair up there. I didn't like, oh my God, I think I'm in labor. And I wasn't like crying. I was like, yeah, I think I'm in labor. And they're like, oh, okay, um, come over here. Let's get your weight. I'm like, bitch, I don't wanna do this right now. Can we just like hurry up with whatever we're gonna do? Because my main concern was that the contractions would get really bad. And then I would be like, shit out of luck because I would have taken too long to like get the epidural or something and I was kind of scared I would like have her really fast I didn't but I was like scared I would they were just taking their sweet ass time and they took me and Alicia to this room and they're like okay get this gown on and then I'll be back in a little bit and we'll see how far you're dilated and what's going on I do that <laughs> we sat there forever just waiting for someone <laughs> to come back and like they're like here push this button and then i'll come back i push that button and then one came back we push the button again no one came back i'm like alicia you're gonna have to go find her you're gonna have to do something at that time i was having a lot of <sighs> it wasn't even i don't even think it was back pain it, what it was was like the most intense tightening ever and it was in my back, which I normally is called, I guess, back labor, but it wasn't like super painful. But my concern was that the way that my muscles were squeezing, which felt insane. It felt like a rubber band that was about to break. Um, I have a pinched nerve in my lower back and I was like very scared that it was going to make my pinched nerve get pinched more. <laughs> and hurt and that was my main concern more than the contractions like i don't know if you've ever had a pinched nerve but it is like the worst pain ever so that's why i was like alicia you need to go get her now because like my concern is in the contractions i'm just like scared of my back getting fucked up so finally finally the lady comes back in there and she checks me out and i'm six centimeters dilated which you have to be 10 to have the baby and I was like, yes, bitch, I knew this. And she's like, oh yeah, you're definitely in labor. Mm -hmm. And I'm like kind of surprised. She's like, we're gonna go ahead and take you over to this room. And I'm like, thank God, come on. <laughs> okay, so after they take me into my room, I remember she offered me medicine that wasn't an epidural because I had to be on an IV for like an hour before I could have the epidural. So in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna take this medicine because I don't want the contractions to get really bad and me not to have any medicine in my system at all. So I was like, sure, I'll take it. And I feel like all it did was make me loopy. And I remember falling in and out of sleep several times. <laughs> like I would, I would remember sitting there and just being like, man, I'm super tired and I just like go to sleep. And then I'd wake up and be like, man, I'm really awake. I'd like feel awesome. And, but I also kind of felt a little dizzy, but I like felt, wide awake and then like two seconds later I'd be like, I'm super sleepy again, <laughs> just fall back asleep. And finally they gave me the epidural and 
Can I just say that an epidural, at least for me at the time, was absolutely painless. I didn't feel anything. When you see the videos and you see a giant needle going into someone's back, you're like, ooh, I bet that doesn't feel good. I literally did not even feel it happen, so that was amazing. So for me, the epidural didn't work 100%, but it worked enough for me to be happy with it because basically I think it can work in weird ways depending on where to put your back and like the angle of it because one of my legs was completely numb and the other side of my body i could still feel contractions they didn't hurt that bad but i could like still feel them <laughs> they, they i remember them saying like okay enough medicine is like enough to like numb the pain but you don't need to like make your legs numb to where you can't move so i remember just being like making more medicine come out <laughs> like one leg is completely numb and i'm just like maybe i should make more come out because i still feel it on the other side <laughs> it's not helping but it was okay it ended up being fine all the way through it was never really that bad on that side so after like a while i went into what i think was transition which i don't remember what that means but like i think it's when your body's getting ready to have the baby or something and uh, since I left my house that morning, I was shaking really bad and people kept being like, are you cold? And I was like, no, I'm just shaking. And I think that was like a thing with your hormones. And then I think this also was too, because what had happened was I threw up everywhere. <laughs> it was really weird. because I was just sitting in the bed. I felt fine. And then I was like, I feel like I have to burp. So I sat up and I was like trying to burp. And then like, I remember <laughs> just like, I said like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. And like two seconds later, it was like, everywhere everywhere beside me on the floor on me all over the bed and i was like hooked to a million different things so like i couldn't get up i couldn't move i couldn't do anything <laughs> and um alicia and her boyfriend and isaiah were in the room and i feel like <laughs> i feel like austin which is alicia's boyfriend was like ew what's going on <laughs> I feel like isaiah was just like whatever you and then as soon as i'm done the nurses come in and alicia's like D do you want me to help you do you need me to help like just being so nice and i'm like how <laughs> how are you asking like do you want me to help clean up i'm like if that was me and she did that and i was in the room with her i would have been like no i would have like took it off out the room it was disgusting and like the nurse came in and i was like i, I threw up everywhere and she's like Oh, oh, that's okay. That normally happens. And then she's seen how much poop there was and she's like, Oh, um, can someone come help? Uh, yeah, there's, she, there's a lot of puke in here. So another lady comes in, they have to like change the whole bed sheet things under me. Well, like moving me around or I'm connected to shit. They have to like clean up the whole area. And I was just thinking, oh, this this happens often, huh? It's not a big deal. Then why the fuck didn't you give me like a trash can or something? Because anyone that I've ever talked to didn't say that they threw up during labor. But I've soon found out after that I, I did that that I guess it's normal. I like seen a post on Facebook saying like, oh, it's normal. Like half the people that go into labor have that. And I was like, well, that was the worst part of my labor. <laughs> That was disgusting. It ended up happening again, but when it happened again, I had like a puke bucket, thank God. And I think it only happened again because I was drinking water and I feel like my body was trying to like expel everything out. I don't know, it was weird and gross. So like, I feel like just the water being in there was like, nope, and made that come back up, but that was okay. It wasn't everywhere. And then I just laid around and waited to go into labor. So I feel like it was taking quite a long time. I mean, not really, but for the amount that I was like having contractions, I feel like we were all expecting me to have her sooner. I remember talking to my mom and she like, think, she was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it in time. I gotta go do this or whatever. And then she ended up getting there and we're all just like, so when's this gonna happen? <laughs> so I think they ended up breaking my water and then it happened pretty fast after that. They just came in and kept checking me. So finally they said, it's time to push. And so they came in, everyone got ready. It was weird. I had Alicia in there. I had my mom in there and Isaiah was holding my leg. <laughs> it's hilarious. They, they told him like, do you want to look? And I was like, I said, don't look because if I shit, I don't want you to look at it. But he looked anyway and then his face, everyone was like <laughs> laughing at him because he was like, no, no, <laughs> just gonna pretend that didn't happen. I didn't look, 
but he did good. I didn't really care who's in the room whenever I went to labor. I was like, you know what? This is y'all's fault. If you want to be here and see this, that's on you. I don't care. I'm going to do this anyway. It didn't like affect me. So I was only pushing for like a half an hour. I remember the people were like, you're doing a great job at pushing. And I was like, you know what? It's probably because I've been constipated for months on end. And just to chit during the day is like, I have to push so hard. So I feel like I'm probably just like the greatest pusher because they, they say like, push like you're trying to poop or whatever. And that's what I was doing. <laughs> and I guess she came out pretty quick. I guess some people push for like hours. The pushing wasn't that bad. I mean, I feel like by the end I was kind of worn out. I'm like, we come on, I'm getting tired of pushing. And uh, the nastiest thing was I felt my vagina rip. Ugh, ugh, it was gross. I didn't, it didn't hurt because of the epidural, but I literally felt it like, ugh. but it wasn't that bad. I only like a little rip, I think. They're like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. But I don't know how that's possible because when she came out, she was huge. She weighed eight pounds and 9.9 .9 ounces. When I came out, I weighed like seven something. So, I don't know why she was such a fatty. She looked like a giant sumo wrestler. Her face was like smushed and like purple. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's what was in me. <laughs> I had her at almost 6 p.m. I guess they called it 5.58. So yeah, I was in labor for like 10 hours. I don't feel like that was very bad. Some people are in labor for like days. That sounds horrific. So she came out and I remember they gave her to me and at the hospital they have a thing where they're like they want for the first hour that she comes out i guess for you to have skin to skin contact the mom and like she just lays on you and i remember they didn't even like clean her like kind of but like they didn't like really clean her and they just like gave her to me and then it was like really weird because we were kind of like does isaiah get to hold her like okay i guess i'll keep holding her i remember alicia being so shitty about that like why, why are you holding her why don't why don't they take her and clean her they didn't fucking weigh her or like check her height until forever later. <laughs> we were all like, so when are they gonna do this stuff? What's going on? But I didn't really care. Militia was like super <laughs> shitty about it. She's like, this place, they don't know what they're doing. Why are they taking so long? Whatever. I was like, eh. I'm sure I, her weight ain't gonna change that much in like a few hours or I don't even remember. Was it the next day? I don't know. I remember, oh yeah, she was also really long. I don't know if I even wrote down. 21 inches. They said she was long and she was fat. And that's probably why I was in so much pain for so long and so uncomfortable. And I'm surprised I didn't have a sooner because she was so big. But the whole time I was pregnant, no one ever said that like she seemed big in there. They always said like I measured, like my stomach measured where it was supposed to be. So I don't know. She was just like a chunk and giant. So I just remember after that being in the hospital and being tired for the next month at least. I felt like a zombie. Like that night I got no sleep, went into labor. That was horrific. And like no sleep the whole time, just dead tired. Then have her, dead tired, can't sleep. She's like a newborn, you have to feed them every two hours. It was absolutely horrible. <laughs> like some people are like, oh my God, it was the best time of my life. I'm like, no, I hated it. Oh God, she cried all the time. <laughs> she cried all the time when I got her home, I feel like more. And like I said, I say I wasn't even living here. So whenever we did bring her home, like, he was working, paying the bills. Like, I wasn't working at the time, so I was just, I was with her most of the time, and I, oh my god. I felt like death. <laughs> okay, so I feel like the end of my story comes to a sad conclusion. Because what happened was I came home, well, while I was at the hospital, Isaiah would leave every day. I think I was there for like two or three days. And he would come home, take care of the dogs, feed them, let them out, whatever. <laughs> Man, when I came home, oh my god, my, my horrible dog Ninja was so much to handle. I couldn't. First of all, you, you're very sore when you give birth vaginally. So let me just say here, when I was in the hospital and I gave my birth, and I didn't realize, one, how swollen a vagina could get. <laughs> like, oh, huge. <laughs> oh my god, and I remember something else that happened to me. I don't, I've never heard anyone else say this. My ass hurt so bad. It felt like someone was, like, 
Nyx, shut up. It felt like someone was like punching down on my ass and asshole. Don't know why, because she didn't come out of there. And I told the doctors that, and they were like, well, let me check down there and see what's happening. And they're just like, oh, you're very swollen. But that's all I see is you're just very swollen. And I'm like, why the fuck does my ass hurt though? Shut up, Nyx! So yeah, it was really bad. Like sitting down hurt. Like, I don't know why it hurt so bad. Like, I feel like she was so big. She like destroyed what was in there. Also for like, well, when I was in the hospital, I realized that I had literally no control over my bladder anymore. I would get up to go to the bathroom and I would just pee my pants. And it didn't matter at the time because I had a giant pad <laughs> for all the blood. This is a very gross story. And uh, so I would be like, what the fuck is kind of, feels like I'm peeing my pants. And I was like, it's just, is that just stuff coming out from down there from just giving birth? And um, no, I just had no control. And I told the doctors that and they were kind of like, oh, like, um, you know, just like a little bit. And I'm like, um, um, I don't know. I was like, I mean, like, I just, it's just coming out on its own. <laughs> they acted like they didn't really care. I ended up like looking it up online. I was like, is this normal? And I don't think so. Because <laughs> I've, I've seen a lot of things be like, oh, like, you know, when you're lifting something or you sneeze, you know, you might pee a little. It's like, no, like, literally no control. So I was, like, really concerned that I was going to last, like, for the rest of my life. I was like, oh, God, every time I had to pee, I was like, I got to go right now or else I'm going to pee my pants. But that only happened for, like, a week, I would say. <laughs> Which is, like, don't know why that happened either. I seriously think that she, like, broke some shit down there when she came out, but... Whatever it was, it ended up like fixing itself and resolving and my asshole doesn't hurt anymore, so. So anyway, yeah, when I came home, the, the devil dog was horrible and I couldn't deal with him. And I felt so bad because I was in like a place of, if I let him out, he does something bad, so he gets in trouble, he goes back in his pen. Then if he's in his pen and Nyx is out of her pen, then he's just barking, 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 barking. So I put Nyx in her pen to make it even so that he just shuts the fuck up but then Nyx just cries and cries and cries and then I feel bad for Nyx because Nyx never does anything bad. I mean like right now she's being an asshole but she doesn't like shit and piss all over the floor all the time like Ninja used to and just tear shit up and run from me. Like if Nyx says something bad I say Nyx stop it and she stops and she stands there and she waits for me to pick her up and put her in her pen. Ninja would just fucking take off. He's such, he was an asshole. I love him to death, but he was an asshole. So I felt so bad and I ended up being so upset because I was trying to decide if I wanted to get rid of him, murder him, no, I'm just kidding. Just give him to somebody. I wasn't gonna like ask for money for him. He was not that old. I think he was like six months maybe. I ended up putting him in my mom's backyard and for like a week, but it was like the end of October. So it was getting really cold and we're like, we don't wanna leave him back there. Cause we knew somebody that wanted him. I didn't know her, but my dad knew her. So I was like, should I just give him to her? So before I did that, I felt super bad. I go over there and see him and he was just like, he missed me and he wanted to come inside. He's not an outside dog. He didn't even ever want to walk in the grass. He was like so prissy. So I brought him back for one, one hour probably. My mom brought him back and I was like, okay, it's been a little bit like, my body isn't so dead. I can kind of move. I mean, I still felt like a horrible zombie, but I was like, I don't want to, Get my baby away, my baby boy, even if he was horrible. And, um, you know, he got here. Instantly peed and pooped everywhere. Like, no matter how many times I try to teach that fucking dog, don't pee and poop everywhere. There's puppy pats for a reason. He didn't give a shit. He did that, and I'm like, oh, dear God. So I'm like, okay, he just got back, it's okay. And he's just running around. Him and Nyx would run around. Nyx was actually scared of him, but they would still play, but she was definitely, like, scared of him. Then I remember Nyx got, like, a cut on her chest from him and she was like bleeding i'm like what the heck she's never bled from him he's like even rougher than normal and then i'm like walking around the house and what he would do is like bite at my pajama pants while i was walking around the house and just like just trying to like play with them and i was like dude <laughs> when the baby gets older and she's like walking or doing anything like i was just terrified he was going to like be what to him was playing he wasn't being mean but he was just playing very rough and i was like Mom, you're gonna have to take him. <laughs> you're gonna have to take him and give him away. And I was so sad. And that's the end of my sad birth story is because I had to give my baby dog away. 
Sadly, you can't give the baby back. No, I'm just kidding. Give the baby back. Put the baby back inside me. I really didn't want to get rid of my dog, so I'm still sad about it. I really try not to even think about it because I don't think it's good to give a dog away, like in any situation, unless it's like safety. I gave him to someone who wanted him. I have no idea how he's doing, but I hope he's good. That's my birth story. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot more elements to it than just giving birth, but So if you like this video <laughs> Give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll be back soon with more videos But they'll probably be makeup videos. Thanks for watching. Bye